My butternut squash pie recipe with lemon and cinnamon is easy and delicious. If you love pumpkin pie, but you're ready for something different, this dessert has that same old fashioned flavor, but with a twist. Let's go over the ingredients. To make the filling for nine inch pie shell, you will need one cup of packed roasted butternut squash, about 250 grams, but I'm using 260. So this is what it looks like. You can see it's very firmly packed into this one cup. What I did is I took a large butternut squash, just like this one, and I cut off the elongated part here. And then I cut off the peel and I put the slices and, and then I cut the long part into slices and I put the slices on a baking sheet, in this case a pizza pan. I rub them with butter and I bake them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 25 minutes, turning after 10 minutes, after a, another 10 minutes. And then at the end, they roasted for an additional five minutes. And then I took them out of the oven. So as you can see, the butternut squash is definitely roasted and it's just starting to get a bit of color on it. That is what you want. By roasting the butternut squash in the oven and getting just a little bit of color on it without burning it, this will give you the maximum amount of flavor. So to that, I'm going to add one third cup white sugar as I measure 70 grams, one third cup light brown sugar as I measure 80 grams, a lot of lemon, one tablespoon of lemon zest. If you don't want to zest all those lemons, you could do one teaspoon of zest and one teaspoon of extract, two tablespoons of lemon juice, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of butter that I'm going to melt, half a cup of evaporated milk, or you could use regular whole milk, three large eggs, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt to bring out the flavor. And I'm just going to mix everything together and pour it into a nine inch pie shell. The first step in this recipe is to start mashing the sweet potato, or excuse me, the butternut squash. So I'm just going to scoop out my roasted butternut squash and just really quickly give it a head start by mashing it with my fork like this. So once it's mashed, I will bring you back. And in just a couple minutes, if that, my butternut squash is now mashed. The next step is to melt the tablespoon of butter. So I'm just going to put this into the microwave until it melts and then I'll bring you back. Now that the butter is melted, I'm just going to add it to the bowl. Now this butternut squash pie recipe is super easy. All I have to do is add the ingredients to the bowl here, mix them together, and then pour the filling into my unbaked nine inch pie shell. Honestly, the order doesn't really matter, except you want to save the eggs for the end. Light brown sugar, like I said, a third of a cup. And you want to do that because you want to add the other ingredients to help bring down the temperature of the butter, the white sugar, so that you don't accidentally cook the eggs. You do not want scrambled eggs in your pie filling. lemon juice, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And if you want to leave out the cinnamon, you can. I think it would still be a very nice pie. It would have a cinnamon, or excuse me, a lemon flavor. That would be very nice. But that bit of cinnamon is going to help it taste more like a pumpkin pie. Like I said, a tablespoon of lemon zest. Or if you don't want to spend a lot of time zesting, one teaspoon of zest and one teaspoon of extract. And now what I'm going to do 
is I am going to blend everything together. I am going to use an electric mixer, but you can use uh, just a spoon if you want. And notice, like I said, I'm saving the eggs for last so that the butter can cool down. But I'm also going to start mixing it before I add the eggs so that I can taste the filling and adjust it if necessary. Okay, now for a quick taste test. Mmm, delicious. This filling looks a bit dry compared to the sweet potato pie that I made. So I might actually add a little bit more evaporated milk. I'm going to start off with a tablespoon at a time and see how that goes. You know what, I'm just gonna do one tablespoon now, then I'm gonna add the eggs and see what I think. But like I said, I roasted the butternut squash in the oven, so it, depending on how much you roast yours, you might need to add a little bit extra evaporated milk. Because if you like your butternut squash really, really roasted, you're gonna roast out some of that moisture. And now for the eggs. I incorporated the eggs, but I'm still gonna add another tablespoon of evaporated milk. So this is two additions. There, I finished beating in the eggs and the extra evaporated milk. I added two extra tablespoons of evaporated milk. So a total of a quarter cup plus two tablespoons. Sometimes you have to adjust recipes as you make them. So now that the filling is done, I'm going to pour it into my unbaked pie shell. And I am going to bake this pie at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, uncovered for probably 45 minutes. And one thing I did want to point out is that I did not add extra lemon juice. That is because I think two tablespoons is just right. If you add more than that, you're going to get a sourness, a tartness in the background that I don't really want in this pie. So that's why I added more evaporated milk. And as always, I'm going to put my pie on this pizza pan. So that it's easier to take in and out of the oven. I just pulled my butternut squash lemon pie out of the oven. It was in at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, uncovered for 50 minutes. 5-0. I think for most people, your pie should take 45 to 50 minutes. It's going to depend on how much liquid you bake out off the butternut squash. The first thing that really caught my attention about this pie was the color of the filling. It was a deep, dark, beautiful orange color that really reminded me of pumpkin pie. And honestly, I thought the color was even stronger and more attractive than most of the pumpkin pies that I've seen. That's probably because I used fresh butternut squash and not canned pumpkin puree like I think most people in the United States use when they make a traditional pumpkin pie. And when I took the first bite, I knew that my butternut squash pie recipe with lemon and cinnamon was a big success because it was absolutely delicious. This pie tasted a lot like pumpkin pie. A few weeks ago, I made a crustless pumpkin pie recipe here on my YouTube channel and this butternut squash one tasted very similar. There was a touch of lemon in the background and maybe it wasn't quite as spicy as a normal pumpkin pie, but the flavor was very similar. And I think that if you served a slice of this pie to someone who didn't know what it was, they would probably say that this is a pumpkin pie. What's interesting though is that 
I actually made this pie already here on my channel a few years ago and maybe I'm just not remembering it correctly but I don't remember it tasting so much like a pumpkin pie. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it was bad, it was very good, but I just remember the flavor being different. I remember there being a stronger lemon flavor and thinking that it was different from a regular pumpkin pie. That being said, I was still very pleased with how this pie turned out. The filling, like I said, had an amazing orange color. The flavor was very good, probably slightly stronger than a normal pumpkin pie and the crust was perfectly golden brown. And as you can see here with the close-up, although the filling was definitely smooth and creamy, there were still small chunks of butternut squash here and there. So this pie definitely had that rustic homemade feel to it. Really, there isn't anything that I would change about this recipe. The only thing I wanted to point out is that as you saw in the video, I had to add some more evaporated milk because I thought that the filling looked like it was going to be dry. So depending upon how much you roast your butternut squash in the oven, if it roasts for a long time and you bake out a lot of the moisture, you might have to add a little bit more evaporated milk than just half of a cup. I honestly wouldn't change anything about this recipe. If you really love pumpkin pie, then you might want to use pumpkin pie spice instead of just plain cinnamon. But like I said, I thought that this turned out great. So if you like pumpkin pie, but you want something a little bit different, you should definitely give this butternut squash pie recipe with lemon and cinnamon a try. Like I said, it's very similar to pumpkin pie, except that there's a touch of lemon in the background. It's not quite as spicy. And I would also say it's slightly more flavorful because I just think butternut squash is more flavorful than pie pumpkin. This would be the perfect dessert for the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, or any time in the fall. So if you want something different but yet familiar, this is definitely a dessert to try. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.